Thank you for joining us again for another episode of Transformational Tuesday. This is where we want to bring you the journey of the people that are getting super amazing results in property investing. So this week we have the wonderful Emma. Would you like to just introduce yourself, who you are, tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, hi everyone. My name's Emma and I'm from FW Property, who I run with my partner Dan. Um, we joined the Real Life Tribe just over a year ago now and we, we started really at ground zero in terms of investing. Uh, while my partner did have experience in the building trade, we weren't kind of experienced enough to know how to raise funds or build a portfolio for ourselves. So we, yeah, we joined the tribe a year ago. So what made you want to get into investing? Because Dan, Dan was already in yeah. construction, doing building. It was seeing the benefits of property without reaping them for ourselves. Um, for myself, I was actually working in digital marketing, which I've been doing for many years, had my own business doing so. But I, I needed a change, I needed more flexibility. We've got two children now. Uh, we've got Freddie, who's two, and Amelia, who's six weeks old. So you only had one? Daughter, son, in the beginning. Yeah, son. So we had one Freddie. Son, one yeah. Son in the beginning. And now, now we've through your journey. You had a second. Yeah. Child. Then Emmy was born six weeks ago. So awesome. for me, it's perfect because already just in one year of property, I've actually made the decision to close down my marketing business, wow. and I'm now full time in property. Wow. Um, and that's just from less than a year of working with you guys. So, um, so you've done the whole pregnant property developer. Yeah, pregnant property developer. Oh, yeah. Um, that was yeah, pregnant property developer. Um, taking Freddie on site and also um, Amelia came with us um, just when we were doing our final checks before the tenants moved in. So yeah, baby's on board while we're investing and it's great now because it means that, you know, after the Christmas period, um, I'm not now, I don't have to go to work. I don't have to, you know, be sat in the office nine till five, working on clients, having constant client calls. I've now got that flexibility to actually have proper maternity leave, well, kind of, with Emmy. Whereas with Freddie, because I was self-employed, I was always working. So yeah. it's really important to me now that I'm able to kind of so use work, my time. Yeah. You don't get paid. Yeah. Self-employed. That's how it works. Yeah. Right? Whereas now I can still work, but I can be a lot more flexible with it. Um, it just means that my, my new little family can come first. So I'm sure people want to know, like, what was going through your mind? You say that you could see the benefits of investing mm. in property, but without reaping it for yourself. So tell yeah, me like, so, was that through the work Dan was doing? Or? Yeah, so Dan was, um, he's been involved in the building um, for years, really, since he finished school. So he was involved in everything from uh, warehouse conversions into apartments to new builds, to building extensions for people. and But it was always sort of, he wasn't getting the financial benefits or building a portfolio for himself. And we kind of had a discussion and we kind of worked out where we want to be and what's important to us as a family. And we knew that investing was, was for us. So it was kind of, how do we take that, that first step? And so yeah. then where were you looking? Like, or what research were you doing? Yeah, so we were looking online. We found, we came across all the typical sort of um, training providers and then we came across uh, one of your free events. So we thought, what have we got to lose? Um, we knew we wanted to make a change, but we didn't really know where to start. And I think I was on holiday at the time and we kind of, I came across it online, sent it to Dan and we said, yeah, let's give it a go. We've got nothing to lose. We were a bit skeptical because we're like, oh, do we, what, what's going to happen? Like, are we going to get any information from there? Is it just going to be like a hard sell? But we left feeling so excited, passionate. I think we, we kind of joined the tribe, was it like a day after? Um, but also for me, we learned a lot. It wasn't just, this is what we do. It was actually, this is how, well, how you've done it, um, how you've done HMOs, how you've done all your different types of property investment. And I actually came away knowing a lot more about it and how to do figures. And for me, it was brand new to me. I'd never, never really done that before. So I felt that I got a lot of value that day and it made me just want to do a lot more. Yeah, so in, I remember actually watching you in your little team yeah. looking for deals. Yeah. So, so that was literally the first time you looked into how figures work mm. and how to even find a property, what strategy is for you. So like what was going through your mind? Was it making sense? Was, was yeah, it I mean, to be honest, I didn't even know what a HMO was. <laughs> um, now I've got loads of them. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, it, it definitely, it suddenly all just all clicked into place. Like for us, 
we, we had done obviously flips, we had experience with sort of development and extending a property and adding value. So we knew that sort of stuff, that, that kind of just comes a bit naturally to us. Just from down working. In just from down working in property and just having my own house and knowing, oh, if I did this, it would add value. So had that sort of grounding, but in terms of investment and portfolio, and figures and like sort of doing it as a business. yeah doing it as a business absolutely no 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 experience whatsoever so what was the thoughts going through your mind like i don't know if it was months or years before where you thought yeah property could be a good you know gig for us what were the, what like what stopped you what did you think that you needed that you think you didn't have oh it's absolutely thinking we would need all the money in the world to be able to invest um that was the biggest thing you know i've always had an interest in property always had an interest in interior design as i'm sure a lot of a lot of women out there do um, but it, for us, we didn't have an endless pot of, of money to be able to buy these properties. Um, and that's what stopped and, Yeah, and that's what stopped us. So I think the main thing that we were interested in was, well, how have you guys done it? Because, you know, you've worked with, you've gone from zero to eight and a half million, is it now? Um, and that was definitely the biggest barrier why we didn't perhaps do it sooner, because we thought that we perhaps weren't financially available, so not financially in a position mm -hmm. to be able to go out and buy you know, five properties at a time plus pay for the development costs. So was there a particular turning point where you thought, right, yeah, this is what it, we want to do? Yeah, it was, I think it was on the day when we came to the event. We both walked away like, right, that is what we're doing. Um, and we actually went for a drink after that evening and we just had our iPhones out. We were just on right move and we were writing notes. We was like, right, so this would be a deal. This is how much money we'd need. And we had our, because you gave us the handouts, didn't you? Um, and we had them in like a folder and we actually had that out on the table. We had our drinks. We were scribbling notes. The same night. On the same night, yeah. And then that's how, and then I think... Two days later, I went to view a property, put an offer in, and that's the one that's just completed now. Well, completed a few weeks ago as our five-bed commercial so you found HMO. A property, put an offer in a few days later. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, we're probably going to hear a little bit more about. Yes, that, that is the one. So yeah, we were really excited, and we just literally as soon as we left, we got stuck in, and we haven't looked back since. But what's the challenges? Because um, oh, so the many. And it's been very uh, entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've been very vocal about <laughs> yeah. it as well, which is brilliant because you're going to share your experience and that's why we're doing this. It's a big learning for everyone. Yeah, I feel like I've learned so much in such a short space of time, but I now know that I had to go through all that to get the amazing results that we have got because at the start for me, you know, I've I'd worked in marketing for, you know, 10, 15 years, you know, on, on and off basically from university. So for me, property was completely new. So not only did I have to sort of learn about property deals, locations, how to sort of make the financials work, how to do figures. Um, I also had to sort of learn about what actually happens when you've got a deal because it's, it's not a straightforward process as I've learned. We had issues such as at the start, because we was, this was our first deal, we obviously we didn't have the investment, so we had to sort of find the investors and get the funds because it was, you know, it's not an overnight thing to do. We kind of nearly lost the deal three times. Uh, I was like, no, that's it. It's not working for me. It's never going to work. So was there a time where you thought like, yeah, like, going to quit? Yeah, because I was, because we were so close to losing the deal, I had like the agents calling me and they obviously, agents, it's their job to kind of push things forward. Um, I was trying to learn delay tactics, which Trisha was helping me with because obviously I needed more time to try and raise the funds. In the background, I was sort of networking. I was kind of speaking to people I knew, going to different property networking groups and just trying to sort of get out there to find the investment we needed for this deal because we knew the figures were great on it. We knew we'd found an amazing property in a good location and now it was just finding the right partner for us. Um, and yeah, eventually kind of on, I think the, you know, the, the last minute before perhaps we might have lost the deal, I, I got two investors on board and like they always say everything comes when you when you need it the just most. The yeah, literally time. just in the nick of the time nick of time. I went to a networking event at six o'clock in the morning and I was due to have a call with the letting agent at nine o'clock in the morning to basically pull out. And at that networking meeting at six AM I got 
the last investment that we needed. Wow. So then by nine o'clock, I was like, yeah, we're fine, moving forward. And then, yeah, from then on, it's it's been... But what was interesting, I remember a conversation. You went out there to, like we say, to do is to network, get yourself around people that are already doing it in your areas, you know, build those relationships and things like that. And didn't you have quite a bit of negative feedback as well? You learned a lot in regards to that too. Yeah, I think the biggest thing that it kind of... I don't know, it worried me a lot because obviously I didn't have the experience myself was hearing that you wouldn't get a commercial valuation um, on sort of the properties that we were dealing with. Because and these are people that ran those networks. Yeah. Companies. So they've been investing in that area for many, many years. Yeah. There's a lot of people that perhaps have got large portfolios, have been investing in the area um, and they they just said it wasn't possible to get such a high sort of commercial valuation because my deal as well was was perhaps a smaller deal in compared like in comparison to perhaps other HMOs. It was just a three bed terrace that would turn into a five bed HMO. Now obviously five beds is difficult to get a commercial valuation. So I, I started to kind of have all these fears thrown at me and I was kind of saying, yeah, we're going to do this. Did that make these you are the figures. Yeah, definitely. Because it was, you know, hearing it from people who have, who own a lot of properties and been doing it for a few years, when they're telling you, no, you won't get a commercial valuation on that. Of course, it makes you think, oh, what am I actually doing? Like, I'm a bit out of my depth here. But um, so we... what was going through your mind versus you got the training, the process, the steps to follow versus what everybody in the market was telling you? What was that called? Yeah, it's hard because you kind of, you want to believe and you believe in yourself and you kind of you have your figures that you want. But when everyone's kind of against you, and especially when you're kind of trying to do everything else in terms of finding your investors and just, you know, finalizing the deal and everyone's telling you, no, it's not going to work. Yeah, it's horrible because it makes you feel like sick to your stomach and we, it could have given up so easily because everything was kind of pointing in the direction that we should have. But within us, we also knew what our end goal is and our end goal was for us, obviously, being financially free to look after our family. That's And obviously, with a little one running around, we just knew we had to keep going. And I'm so glad we did because I did nearly sort of give up in the end. And because I was so busy, I was still working full time as well. What was going through your mind that made you want to give up? Just that it was, it wouldn't work. That it wasn't possible. That what you'd said perhaps wasn't real. Um, that it might have worked for you, it wouldn't work for us. That we wouldn't find the money. That we wouldn't get the valuation. That we wouldn't be able to. If we even if we did find the money and we didn't get the valuation, we'd be left owing our investors a lot of money. Um, and just all these things are constantly going around. And um, the fear. Yeah, the yeah. massive fear. But. Yeah, luckily, thanks um, thanks to you guys and obviously our coach that we, we did keep going because it, it worked out really well for us in the end. So you kept going? Yeah. That got you to the point where you got this deal, yeah. offer was accepted, your exchange, you completed. Yeah. Any other challenges? Yeah, so various challenges, even once, you know, starting the build work, obviously nothing goes to plan. Um, we had issues sort of with the actual property from... Um, in the dry rot. Yeah, with with some contractors and stuff. <laughs> so um, because one of our investors was actually a build contractor himself, so he kind of self funded a lot of the work, and then we paid the deal was that we pay him back at the end. That's how we managed to get kind of the rest of our investment. So it was a bit of an unusual one that we didn't perhaps have the full control of the build that we would perhaps on future projects, um, and then from that I think. We had challenges such as things not being delivered on time, the property we found extra damp, uh, wood uh, worm, dry rot, things like that, just things that naturally added a lot more time to the deal. But again, it was all a learning curve. Uh, we've come away from it learning a lot more about how we want to operate as a business. So not only did we, obviously now we're very confident with getting the deal, securing the deal and actually getting it completed, now we know, right, as a business, we want these processes in place. We want to work with certain partners this way. We need these contracts in place. We know that we want, you know, more regular communication with different contractors. And we just learned so much. So we're kind of starting the year now thinking, right, last year was experience, definitely experience for us. We had a great outcome, but it was a learning curve. And this year is all about now, right, this is a business, this is how we treat it, these are our processes, this is what we want to do on a monthly basis, and these are our, our goals for the end of the year. So, yeah, it feels now real, like it feels like now I'm going back to work tomorrow, I'm going to sit in my office and we're going to actually have a proper business, whereas before it was just a bit of trial and error, I guess, but yeah. 
learn to look. Trial and error. Mm. Because it is, it's all about experience. The Definitely. learning is, is when you're doing it as opposed to actually just learning about it. Yeah, yeah, because we would not have learned so much in such a short space of time without the training, the coach, and actually having a deal to work on because things come up like. Um, issues with solicitors and needing to know, you know, learning about all the contracts you have to sign and the legalities and search reports um, and just, yeah, just so much that you can't learn unless you're actively just getting out there and doing it. And also, you know, learning and from what other people are doing. I think that's been a real big help as well. Um, and just ways like the so I guess ways that we had to delay the agent so we kept the property yeah. speaking to people who've been in similar situations and given us ideas and said well you could say this and it doesn't make you you know look bad but it's actually giving you a bit more time to be able to deliver what you need to yeah. um, it's, hard to, it's hard to work with the truth yeah it's hard to work with the bend truth. the truth <laughs> yeah, but without the story in your mind that oh someone might think this about me or think yeah. bad about me it's like hey look yeah. you've got to say it as it is you've got to stay in communication because I don't ever want to let people down and like even when we went for this particular deal because it was such a good property I remember we were actually up against an experienced investor um, who put an offer in our offers were basically the same it was asking price of a bit more um, but it's because I built a relationship with this agent which is again is what you kind of taught us in the training that she put me above this experienced investor with a big portfolio and it was from that um, that I was able to get it. So then, because she's kind of, I had a relationship with her, she's got the deal for me. Then to obviously delay, you kind of, you don't want to let people down and it's kind of that, it gets a bit personal. I know it shouldn't, but it does. So it's just learning ways to kind of manage people, manage their expectations while trying to scramble and get everything together um, in the back end. But luckily it all, all worked well. So over that, this last 12 months, what results do you now have? Okay, so um, over the last 12 months, so the first project that we've been talking about was a three bed terrace that we converted to five bed all on suite HMO for six people. Um, we, obviously we built it, we developed it, we did it to a very high standard, which I absolutely love doing. It's such a good, um, good experience and yeah, I can't wait to do more. But we actually received a commercial valuation on the property um, at the beginning of December. So the purchase price for that property was 145,000. Um, and the commercial valuation we got was 360,000. Yay! Yay! Oh my God, um, first property though, that is a big deal. Yeah, oh, it's huge. Tomorrow. Yeah, because it wasn't easy, like even in the middle part, so we have to have the pre-valuation. We kind of followed the process um, and we got the valuation of 325, but then it was kind of reduced at the bank's end, like quite significantly because they were kind of saying, oh, it's not going to be worth that much. Even though a Rick's valuer had given us that valuation, they knocked it down. So that was another thing that kind of put the fear in me that, oh my God, we are about to start this project. We've got the investment, we're doing all the development. But it, now the, we've got the valuation, I followed the process, but now the bank is saying that it's not worth that much. Um, so, but we carried on going again. And then at the end, yeah, because we had delivered it to such a high standard, we actually got more than we even expected to begin with. So that was brilliant. So yeah, we've successfully refinanced. We have paid back all of our investors. We actually got some money out for ourselves, uh, which was always nice around Christmas. Um, alongside that in the background, we also bought a three bedroom semi-detached, which is gonna be, it's just rented out at the moment as a normal buy to let, but we will be submitting planning to extend to a four bed and then just renovating it and then refinancing it. The reason we purchased that property is because it's got land it's got what we believe will be good access. So we're also in the process of submitting plans for that to build a two or three bedroom bungalow. And again, we'll refinance that, maybe sell that because obviously that'll give us quite a lot more money to um, invest. And last week, no, sorry, a couple of weeks ago, so just before Christmas, we exchanged on a property I've been working on for a long time. Um, it's an amazing one, it's like a TARDIS. It's split on four floors, big Victorian terrace, really, really long. And we submit plan. We submitted plans to create eight apartments, and we had planning permission approved. So we exchanged on that just before Christmas, and we will be completing some point this month. And then the next project is a another house that we're developing into four one-bed apartments. Again, great location, city centre near a train station. And we're due to get planning back on the 9th, so next week. 
And again, we're due to exchange on that property on, well, Monday or Tuesday this week. So, wow. so come the come 1st of February, Dan will be very busy because he's going to be uh, managing the two projects, which will give us 12 apartments. Uh, we've already had our pre-valuation reports and they're well over, I think, 1.2 million total. I think one property has been valued at 770,000 and the other one was like 500. So um, yeah, not a bad, bad start to the year. And then in the background of that, once I'm back to work, um, I'll be looking for some more smaller deals just to do a couple more HMOs. Yeah, because, because what we're doing now is the issue we've got now is we've got too many investors and not enough deals because we've got a new, no problem. yeah, because we've got our investors from the project that we've just paid back who are now loving it. And that, well, oh yeah, I want to do another one. But the two larger projects is actually a new investor and that's our first joint venture uh, partnership because the other one was, they worked as angel investors so I was lucky enough to own the property myself so now that property will be giving us about 1,500 net profit every month and obviously that's not a joint venture either so that obviously covers any you know salary for me if I like. Um, yeah. And yes, and then we've got a new investor who's a joint venture who's funded both of those deals. That's a really good partnership for us because, you know, once these projects have kind of refinanced, got the money out, he'll be an investor for life. And then we also have a couple of new investors who have seen what we're doing. They've got the funds ready and it's just a case now of finding a deal that kind of works for all of us. So, yeah, so it, it's, it's, I'm excited to sort of get back and I'll be doing, you know, a few hours in the office each week. I'll be taking little Emmy with me because obviously it's my own office. I can take the baby with me and it still means that I can work while being, being a mum as well, which was really important to me. And yeah, this, this year is looking really, really good. So far. So, so what advice would you give to people who are either having the same thoughts as like, uh, maybe I can't do it, maybe I need all this money, get, may, maybe yeah. there's going to be things that happen like damp and all, all of this, like what advice would you give and whether it's worth you going through that? I think it's start with the end in mind, definitely. That's what's kept us going. We, we know where we want to be. I, my goals board now, we have a, we created a vision board with pictures on it stuck in the kitchen and on there is a villa. Um, in Spain for me so I know that in a few years I'll be not only invest in this country but also abroad and I know that I'm absolutely I need a villa and how am I going to do it it's through property so even though when we have had these hard times and we've had to learn a lot and we've had a lot of setbacks we just kept going because I knew that I absolutely I will end up in that villa in Spain one day and this is just the route to get to it um, and it's, it's absolutely just not giving up um, surrounding yourself with people who can help and share experience because even on some of those times I remember when I didn't have perhaps a coaching call booked in I was just speaking to people who were in the tribe who were going through similar things and we were just sort of helping each other keep going and I know that's been important for me and a lot of the people that joined at the same time as me because we kind of support each other as well because sometimes you don't need you know a full hour coaching session you just need a quick two minute chat with someone just to kind of get yourself back into perspective and Get, keep going with what you're doing and seeing other people achieve as well. I think that's probably kept us going as well. So you've definitely gone through a huge transformation. Absolutely, so what, yeah. What, what would you say uh, was like critical for like this journey? Like without it, maybe you couldn't. Oh, absolutely. Like coaching, coaching was was the big thing for us, and um, because as well, because we're like myself and Dan are a partnership, we have to sort of learn how to work together as well. Um, rather than yeah and that's a big thing and the coaching was was a game changer for us definitely it kind of pushed us out of our comfort zone and um, even things like I, I didn't actually want to go out and get another deal because I wanted to see how my first one worked out because I was really worried about not getting the valuation not paying people back all, all those fears that are kind of taken over so even though I had that I wasn't even viewing deals now through the coaching, I was pushed to go out and do more deals, which is where I found the two that we are starting work on next month because it's been sort of six to eight months to even get them over the line because so we went through planning. Yeah, you'd have waited and yeah. Started, now you wouldn't have all of them. Yeah, and those properties are worth nearly one and a half million once they're finished. Um, and it's, you know, great, great deals. So definitely the coaching has pushed us along and yeah, surrounding ourselves with, with that tribe. really interesting to work out the return on investment. What yeah. you invested in coaching yeah. versus what it's now would have cost you yeah. if you didn't have it, one and a half minute. Absolutely, because I think we added up the, what these four properties, so we've got the, the two that we've bought last year, 
and then the two that we've got, you know, touching nearly two million in, in less than sort of 12 months, or 18 months once they're finished. Um, and I, if you just said that to me when we first met, I wouldn't have, wouldn't have believed you. Okay, we did say that. Yeah, you probably no. did. <laughs> yeah, you did. Um, but yeah, certainly, like, I, if I was doing, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have done that deal on my own, absolutely. There's no way. I might have maybe researched what a HMO is and had a little look, but even just, like, losing the deal and not having the funds, I would not have even got to the point of exchanging on the first deal, let alone exchanging on, you know, we're not just doing small deals now. We're doing like conversions of eight apartments, four apartments. We're Very looking at goal, we're looking at land in a couple of weeks for new builds, you know, and that's only from sort of 12 months. So, yeah, it's exciting. Awesome job. Transformation. Exactly. Huge <laughs> transformation. And that's what this is all about, a transformation, because you can't go back now. No. That transformation. Of no, I've closed my business. Like, that's yeah. it now. Full time property. Now you know what's possible. Now you know what's yeah. possible. Now you know what you're capable of, or you're starting to at least see what you're yeah. capable of, and you're starting to. I think that's the biggest potential. thing now. It's now for me. I don't feel, I think we had like imposter syndrome because although Dan's experience in build and development, which would help me because I've, obviously I understand the build side, understanding investment is, is completely different in terms of understanding not only your returns, but also how to get your money out of deals. And I think that's a key thing that we needed to kind of learn. And I think, although I could kind of talk the talk I couldn't necessarily walk the walk whereas now I can now I've got a case study now I've got a portfolio I've got happy investors and now I'm like oh, I haven't got enough deals like I'm although the baby's only six weeks old I'm like itching to get back to work I want to get back at viewing properties I want to get some new deals and um, because now I'm really confident with actually although I believe that the process worked until I think you do it for yourself yeah. it's really hard to 100% believe in yourself and now I do. So now I can like say, right, these are my figures. This is my property. We paid everybody back. It worked. And now this, we can just start to grow now um, and take it to the next level. We're looking at new locations. Like I said earlier, we've got investors now coming to us, wanting to work with us um, because they've seen what we've done. And to be honest, we've not even been that active on social media yet because of obviously the baby and again, probably being reserved at wanting to get to that refinance point. I've, I have been probably quite reserved and pulling back, but I know certainly that going to this year. you £1,500 a month, you said you refinanced it, how much money did it pay you after you paid everyone back? Um, how much did we get out? We, we took about over 20k, awesome. about 20k, wow. I think in the end, so that's a nice, nice figure. Really? Yeah. So that got you a new handbag, right? Yeah, it did. <laughs> but we treat ourselves, Just so. One. Just one, yeah, we, we've been good. <laughs> we've got other things to pay off, but yeah, no, it just meant that that we kind of, because obviously working in property until you start to get that income, you're kind of sort of working for free, aren't you? So it just means now, especially with me going on maternity and not having my normal income, that we've been able to pay the bills for another month until the property, uh, the other uh, development work starts paying off. Um, and yeah, it just, just kind of takes the pressure off and just, oh. yeah, it's given us a lot more confidence now. And like I say, the biggest thing for me is just being able to spend time with, with the baby rather than having to go back to the office straight away and keep my clients happy. I don't have to worry about that now. Now I work for me, I work for us. I'm still working, but I'm doing it on my terms in, in my time Excellent. with the baby in tow. Well, thank you so much for coming to visit us. Thanks share for having me. Journey, share your transformation with people. I just hope, even if it's just one person, that yes. you inspire, but I know you've already inspired many, Massive many, many people. Yeah. And if anyone ever has any questions or wants to find out a bit more, I'll be more than happy to help. Yeah, excellent, good. So, what, what I get from that is you're just going to follow the process, yeah. follow the steps, yeah. trust the process, trust the group of people, the be right group of people. Yeah, be, surrounded. be surrounded by the right people is probably the biggest thing because it's, especially when you're learning, everybody knows something that you don't. And now I know I know stuff that people perhaps who have just joined the tribe don't know, so now I'm in a position to help people. Um, and just, yeah, ask questions. Don't just sit, like I think in my, my darkest hour, I didn't reach out for help. I was just like, that's it, it's over. I knew we shouldn't have done this. Um, but as soon as I actually spoke to you, Trisha, you were like, what are you doing? You need to do this, this, and this. And within 24 hours, we'd, we'd sorted everything. We'd got too invested. We'd, we'd literally turned it all around. So speaking out and asking for help, um, if you're not sure about something or if you're starting to get the fear, definitely helps. Excellent. And above all, I think never ever forget you've got to do the right thing for the right reason. Yeah. Because that's the only way you're going to discover your true potential. Mm.